Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. In case you're new to the channel and you don't know me, my name's Maya, and behind me is Jess's greenhouse. Today I want to take the time to make a video to kind of help address something that we get asked a ton of questions about, and that is the greenhouse itself. You know, is it a kit? Where did we get it? How did we construct it? Okay, let's start on the backstory of the greenhouse. This greenhouse originally was a kit that we got from Harbor Freight. Getting a kit from Harbor Freight wasn't really a uh, part of our plan. However, my grandmother on my dad's side, who we actually call Nana, who is also, by the way, 100% Irish Canadian, and she's a fearsome storm. I just wanted to say, hey, Nana, because she actually watches all of our videos. Back to the story. She was in town visiting a few years ago. We were telling her about our vision, uh, what our plans were, uh, some of the needs that we had. You know, this was this. You know, the greenhouse is coming up next. We want to do the garden. You know, these are the things that we're going to be putting our money towards. And then she actually took us to Harbor Freight and shopped around and found this kit. We had a coupon. Uh, I think all in all, with taxes and the coupon, we paid somewhere around five hundred dollars. Now Jessica probably knows exactly how much it cost down to the penny. I'm more of a throw the numbers out there kind of guy. You know. Off the cuff, I'm not that great with remembering all the numbers. It was somewhere around 500 bucks. Now it looks nothing like it used to because here's the here's the original picture. Now that was right after we got it assembled and before we had anything done to it, any kind of modification. Leading into this though, we knew that there were going to have to be modifications. We read up all the reviews. Uh, we knew that people uh, were having problems with the stability of it. You know, before we uh, did any kind of modifications to it, it would sway in the wind. Not bad, but it moved enough. There's not just a whole lot of sturdiness to it because there's no wood. It's all just aluminum put together with different bolts and things. It took us three days to assemble it because it was very intricate on sliding different nuts and bolts into different areas. Once we got it done though, uh, we realized real quick that there were gonna have to be some changes. The first modification we did was actually putting in the shelves. Now with the shelves, I designed that specifically to be a reinforcing thing as well as a base for mounting the shelves to for stability. And here's what I mean. In each corner, there is a four x four post that runs on the other side also. The four x fours are resting on what's called a deck block. And that's just essentially a concrete block for uh, kind of like a foundation to give something for the 4x4 to, to rest on. Once we had the uh, 4x4s up, we ran uh, a 2x4 around the outside edge at the top, the middle, and the bottom. And that alone right there reinforced the structure so that it didn't shift and sway in the wind near as much. Definitely added uh, stability. It also allowed us to put in the shelving units that we're currently using. Now, I'd like to say that that was it. You know, we, we did that reinforcement and we put the shelves in and at the greenhouses function, you know, at 100% capacity ever since and has never given us any trouble. That's not the case. All right, let's talk about these panels that we have on the sides right now. These are actually original to the kit and they used to be on the front, the roof, the sides. I mean, it used to be everywhere, as you can tell in the picture that we've uh, we showed you guys. After addressing the stability issue, the next thing we had to problem solve was the panels. The panels were getting blown off because the design they used had just a few uh, metal clips holding all the panels on. We live up on a ridge and the wind was pretty bad and if the wind got bad it would just blow the panels right off i'd be walking all up and down the street uh picking up panels and taking it back to the greenhouse and figuring out where they fit and trying to lock them back in the first thing we did to address the panel issue was securing them with self-tapping roofing screws like this one some of them have washers uh, some of them don't it just kind of depends which ones you buy once we got them secured they held up for a couple of years but then the panels themselves especially the ones on the roof they fell apart and we had to come up with another solution once the panels had degraded we came up with a horrible idea but i didn't know it was horrible at the time i just didn't know any better i'm also we didn't really have the budget for it i came up with a way of making our own panels by sandwiching plastic which we ended up using visqueen which i do not recommend it is not uv stabilized we couldn't afford uv stabilized plastic and i thought we'd get a couple of years out of it and we didn't. So if you're gonna use plastic, make sure it's UV stabilized. So we sandwiched Visqueen in between treated fence pickets that I ripped down 
and use uh, screws to screw it to the aluminum frame. So all the wood that you currently see on the greenhouse, I did uh, that round of modification. That fix gave us the functioning greenhouse which produced all the plants in the garden that you guys saw last year. They all came out of that greenhouse. It functioned for that season. The bad part was this was supposed to be more of a permanent fix. It was not and the plastic degraded and completely fell apart within the panels and I was back to square one having to find a new way of fixing it and investing even more money. The solution that finally worked uh, and I believe will be a the long-term solution that I was looking for were these plastic panels that we got from Home Depot. They're in the shape of corrugated tin but they're fully plastic, they're completely clear and they have a 10-year warranty. And so I ended up investing in these. I think they're $15 for a six foot piece. And so they're a little bit on the pricer end, but honestly, after fixing this thing so many times, as far as the panels that help hold in the heat, honestly, it's cost us twice as much to get to this solution. The next big modification we had to make was the doors. The doors that came with the kit never really worked properly. They didn't seal, they didn't slide like they were supposed to. They fell apart. The panels were, they, the panels on the door fell out worse than any other part of the greenhouse. So I completely scrapped the doors when we did the first uh, remodel of the greenhouse and came up with just custom doors built out of the same treated wood and I did sandwich the non uh, UV stabilized plastic through it so I had to rip it out and replace it with the panels but the doors themselves have stayed sturdy. When I did the doors we went ahead and put in this awning for Jess so she had something to stand in in case it was raining and also I just know how she likes things and I thought it looked really good. I thought she'd like it and I was right. She loved it. Something else we did whenever we did the doors and the awning was we poured this little pad. Because it was straight mud right in front of the greenhouse you were tracking dirt and grass in uh it was just causing a mess and it wasn't fun to stand in and so we went ahead and poured a pad a little roots and refuge heart i realized that the awning and the concrete pad were not things that actually helped the greenhouse be better at being a greenhouse they're just kind of added details that i do to certain projects because i know jessica will appreciate the effort and the aesthetics of it and so you know those not required but i do think that they add a lot of character to the to the greenhouse itself now structurally we have no issues and the panels themselves are all holding up just fine that's not where the problem let me show you uh, the last few things that we need to address on this greenhouse to really button up the build and get it operating at peak efficiency so as you can see the doors are sagging a little bit and it's created quite the gap there's also a gap between the doors here another area that we're losing heat is right here now for the heating issue, I've got three items that I bought that I'm gonna try and use to fix the problem. Those three things are this. Clear silicone, you'll need a caulking gun for that. Expanding foam, be very careful with this. Uh, it expands fast, so use very little amounts. And this is an expanding uh, roofing foam you get at a, at a metal roofing supply and essentially what it's for is to fill in the gaps of the corrugated metal i've tried to use this a little bit and it's not quite filling it as tight as i want to so i'm going to try the silicone and the foam in conjunction with this to try and fill in all the different holes i'll also be using this for the doors i'm going to use some more of the treated fence pickets like i used to build them and i'm going to create some areas where it's overlapping each other and as we shut it, they should push against each other and seal off all those cracks. I'm confident that these two will be good. This is my preference because I think it'll look better. However, I know this will work. I just don't know how good it's going to look. But I think we've decided that functionality is better than aesthetics. And so if we can't get it sealed off with the foam and the silicone, then the expanding foam will come in and we'll definitely get it done then. Once we get everything sealed up and we're holding heat pretty good, the only thing left that we could do to improve on this would be to run its own electrical cord to be able to put in a few outlets directly inside the greenhouse instead of having to run an extension cord from our garage all the way up here, which is what's running the heaters and the lights currently. We're gonna be addressing the uh, heating issues uh, within the next day or so, and I'll give you guys an update in a vlog on how everything went. 
uh, we still got a month and a half left of cold of cold weather, and so we're gonna prioritize uh, getting it getting it sealed up so we can definitely uh, protect the investment of the seeds and the starts that we're that we're planting. Let's wrap all this up. We got the kit because someone bought it for us, and we were appreciative to have it. It did not turn out like I hoped it would. It didn't last as long. It was definitely not as sturdy. And honestly, all the modifications I've had to do to it, this, you know, the ultimate conclusion to all this is that I could have built this exact same size greenhouse um, for less money than what I've already spent uh, to get it to this point. And so, you know, really, you know, as it's been in my experience, you know, most things from Harbor Frank don't last as long as competitors, and that's okay, you get it for a lot less money, and so that should be expected. And so I'm not super disappointed with the kit from Harbor Freight, I just would personally go a different route. You could go and buy all the materials and frame up a greenhouse that looks just like ours, go to your Home Depot, your Lowe's, uh, uh, Menards for you guys up in the north and buy the plastic uh, panels and just wood and Skip the whole kit thing and honestly you'll save money and have a better greenhouse and with a lot less headache and a lot less time invest I'm glad that we got to, to sit and answer a bunch of questions about this particular greenhouse in the next few weeks We're going to be doing our window greenhouse, which is going to be another greenhouse because uh you know, when you have as many seeds and love for tomatoes as Jessica does, you can never have too many greenhouses. And so we're building a greenhouse. It's going to be built out of windows. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the window greenhouse. It's going to be an awesome project. It's really going to cause me to engage my creative side and problem solving side to figure out how to frame in all the windows and get everything to function. Um, I'm also extremely glad to get this greenhouse finally wrapped up, holding heat, you know, powered, water, you know, I'm a finisher kind of guy. Jessica's an idea factory. She loves to start things. I like to start things, but I don't like to start things as much as I like to finish things. I, you know, I'm a finished carpenter. That's kind of my carpentry background. A lot of my brothers are all framers. If you see me framing stuff, that's why a lot of times you'll see them here helping me. Um, but I'm a finished carpenter, and so I love putting on the, the, the finishing details. I love buttoning things up, I love finishing them, and so I'm excited to get this finished, I'm excited for it to be functioning at full capacity without any kind of stress of is it going to get too cold, but I'm also excited to move on and, and, and frame up that window greenhouse for you guys, and I'll do my best to, to give you step by step on what we did, why we did it, and, and honestly my, my, my goal for all of this is to really inspire you guys that you guys can you know build your own greenhouses, you can think outside the box, you can be resourceful. Full. You know, if you decide to go with the Harbor Freight kit and you don't live in a place that's windy and you don't live in a place that has a lot of hail or snow or different elements like that, like, you know, it may do better for you guys. Um, it just didn't really work for us. You know, and if you still, and if you do have the kit already, don't, you know, don't be discouraged. Just, uh, kind of apply some of the things that we've shared here, reinforce the inside, secure the panels. If the panels degrade, just go to your Home Depot and, and get some replacement replacement panels and get those secured. That just about does it for this greenhouse video. I hope I helped answer a lot of questions that you guys are having and uh, helped you guys feel inspired to get out there and, and get your own greenhouse projects done. Stay tuned, we've got a ton of greenhouse content coming up for future projects. And I thank you guys for hanging out with us. I'm gonna be honest, it's a little weird me shooting a video inside the greenhouse because normally I'm watching our videos while Jessica sits here and talks to you guys. But uh, this was actually because I was talking about the greenhouse, the best place for me to sit. Anyways, until next time guys, I bless you. Thanks for watching.